Hi everyone, today we're off to Ireland. On this epic adventure you're going to see Belfast, you'll see Drogheda in the Republic of Ireland, you'll see Dublin, you'll see two different airlines, two different airports, trains, buses, trams, food and maybe the occasional beer as well. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward through the boarding part which is security and I'll see you when we're airside. Well, I made it through security. It was actually quite busy this morning. Uh, this morning I'm catching an EasyJet flight to Belfast International Airport, which is about 18 miles from the city centre. Now, I could have flown on, I think it was Fly B to London City or George Best Airport. That's only a five minute drive from the city centre, but the airfares are a bit more expensive. So I went for the easy option to Belfast International. The catch, however, is that there's a 50 minute bus transfer to get into the city centre. I'm in no great hurry, it'll add a bit of adventure to the video. So what we'll do is we'll fast forward through this bit here and I'll see you on arrival at Belfast International. Cue the music. I made it to Belfast. All I need now is to find where the bus leaves from. Well, my next 50 minutes will be spent on a bus but getting out of the airport and finding the bus was actually very easy.
Well, that wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, mainly because it only lasted 40 minutes instead of 50 minutes, but I still don't like buses. Right, I've got six hours in Belfast. I'm going to do a circular route around the city centre. I'm taking you with me, and I hope you like walking. Let's go. Well, I've just stumbled across Landon Place Railway Station, which is the main railway station here in Belfast. And this is where the trains to Dublin leave from. And it's also where the trains to Drogheda leave from. And that's where I'm heading at four o'clock this afternoon. And I thought, well, while I'm in the area, let's collect my ticket, which I prepaid through the Northern Ireland Railways website. And I'm glad I went in there as well, because it was organized chaos. Um, the Dublin train's leaving shortly. And I swear there's a couple of hundred people there lining up trying to get on this train. There's no advanced seating as far as I can see on this train, so it is a free-for-all. So I'm glad I saw that, and I will be arriving with plenty of time. Worth mentioning as well, everywhere I go, that doesn't matter where it is, people always ask me for directions. Now, I've been here just under an hour, and already I've had one person ask me for directions. So, anyway, let's go and see some more sights of this beautiful city. I'm really surprised at how lovely it is. I should point out, if you're expecting to see the Titanic exhibition on this video, you're in for a disappointment because I'm not going to it. I thought about it and I looked at the website and the price is £18. A little bit steep, but if it's good value for money, why not? I then looked at TripAdvisor and the overwhelming majority of people said it was good value for money, but there was a hardcore number of people who said it wasn't and it was very poor. So of course I had to read them to find out what the problem was. And the most common word used was underwhelming. And I thought, underwhelming? We know the story of the Titanic, how can that be underwhelming? And I think I know where they were coming from. I live in Glasgow and every day I see reminders of Glasgow's great shipbuilding industry. I see cranes, I see the graving docks. If I was to come to Belfast and pay to see the th same things, I think I would feel probably a little underwhelmed as well. It's just my personal opinion. I know the story. I don't want to pay £18 to see a lot of audio-visual displays and things when I can see the real thing in Glasgow anyway. So for me anyway, it's not uh, going to happen. That shouldn't stop you from doing it though, because I believe it's one of the great tourist attractions in Europe. So if you are in Belfast, go and have a look at it. But for me, I think I'll focus on the uh, fantastic Victorian architecture.
Well, I've just spent the last 15 minutes walking along Shank Hill Road, which is uh, Belfast's kind of unionist heartland. Uh, unionists are the ones who want Northern Ireland to remain part of the United Kingdom, and they're primarily Protestant. Um, there wasn't that met much to see, apart from lots of murals, and most of those made reference to uh, the fallen co uh, comrades, I guess that's the right word you could use, defending Queen and Country in the past wars, First World War, Second World War. Not much uh, relating to the Troubles. Anyway, I'm at the Peace Wall, which is something I've wanted to see for years, and I'm finally here. This here is, um, in fact, I've got it down on a piece of paper, the right definition of what this Peace Wall is all about. Are you ready for this? I'm going to ask questions later, so pay attention. It's been described as the intersection of segregated and polarised working class residential zones in areas with a strong link between territory and ethno-political identity. Now you know. Right on cue. So, uh, it is a bit of a, a work of art. There, are, there is talk about it actually being brought down in the next five or ten years, but it's a bit of a tourist attraction and it's a bit of an unfortunate one as well. Uh, Belfast is not unique in having one of these walls. I think Nicosia and Jerusalem has one as well, but I think they share something with those two cities, and that is they all want it to come down. Taxi tours are very popular. One of the problems of having a humongously great wall in the middle of your community is trying to get to the other side. And in that respect, I guess it's doing its job right. But you can actually walk around the wall. And once you get to the other side, um, there's a very different atmosphere. There's a lot more pubs which are painted green. Some of the road signs are in English and Gaelic. There's a few more flags supporting the uh, independence of Catalonia and Spain. A different atmosphere entirely. Uh, I'm just off Falls Road, which is the, the heartland, I guess, of the Republican movement here in Belfast. I'm going to have a look around here, and then I'm going to head back into the city centre. Well, I've completed my grand loop of Belfast and I'm back to where I started from, which is the bus terminal from where the airport bus dropped me off. Um, I'm going to start heading back to the station now where I was earlier today, where I picked up my ticket, and I'm going to give the place a quick once over because I've got plenty of time. I just want to make sure it's not going to be an absolute free for all to get on this train. Okay, I'd like to get a window seat. It's only an hour I'm on the train, but I don't want to be having to use my elbows to get on board the train, if you know what I mean. So, I'm going to head to the station now, and I'll see you when I get there. I just had an old man ask me for directions to a certain bus stop. That's two requests for directions today, no matter where I go. Well, that's Lanyon Place Station. That's the main railway station for Belfast. And it's probably one of the ugliest stations I think I've ever seen. Well, I went into the station just to see how chaotic things were. And unlike this morning's total carnage, it was peaceful, quiet, serene, apart from a group of 
pretty drunk girls heading for Dublin for the night, for a hen's night. Apart from that, it was business as per normal. I have noticed, I did notice on the board there were a few trains delayed by up to about 20 minutes, so maybe they had something to do with it this morning. But fingers crossed there'll be no free-for-all on this train because I'm really tired. I was up at about 5.30 this morning to catch that EasyJet flight and I think I managed about four hours sleep, so I'm really tired. If I'm not my usual sparkly self, you know why. Anyway, um, time to do a bit of walking and then I'm gonna head back to the station, maybe have a beer, no, that'll put me to sleep. I better have a coffee to keep me awake uh, and I'll see you back at the station. Leaving in 10 minutes, the Enterprise train to Dublin, and I'm catching it as far as Drogheda. The train before this one was delayed 65 minutes, but I think this one's leaving on time. Please take care of the lighting from the train. Well, I've made it to Drogheda, or as the locals pronounce it, I think it's pronounced Drogheda. I was doing a calculation while I was on that train, and I haven't been here in 33 years. But you're going to have to watch part two to find out why I've come back after 33 years. That was actually quite a fun trip. It started off very, uh, very quiet, the train, out of uh, Dublin. By the time we got to Newry, an old man joined me and promptly fell asleep, and at the next stop, Dundalk, uh, three girls got on, well, two girls and a woman. The two girls were around about 20 years of age. The other woman was the mother, who was well into her 40s, but still dressed as if she was in her 20s, if you know what I mean. And they were pretty well, you know, they'd been having a few drinks, heading down to Dublin for a hen's night or something. Anyway, um, I'm here in Drogheda, and I'm gonna be spending the night here. Here's an interesting point. When I tried to book my ticket from Dublin to Drogheda, I went onto the Irish Railways website and 
trains always seem to make a noise when I'm doing a recording. It was going to cost me £13, but then it picked up the fact that I wasn't in the Republic of Ireland, redirected me to the Northern Ireland Railways website, where it promptly charged me 20 Work that one out. Anyway, I'm going to find my way out of this station. Having arrived safely in Drogheda, I'm going to wrap up part one with this video. Um, in part two, you will see this. And you will definitely see this. And you'll probably see this as well. So hit that like button, please subscribe, and I'll see you in part two.